In the original Final Fantasy, three elements were created as a way of introducing strategy. Players who took advantage would be able to exploit enemy weaknesses to deal enhanced damage, and when the summon mechanic was introduced with Final Fantasy III, it was important that these three elements were represented. This saw Ifrit associated with fire and Shiva associated with ice. Both served as the very embodiment of their elemental traits, with Ifrit depicted as a feral beast and Shiva as a cool and calm queen. Lightning would then be associated with Ramu. Often depicted as a wise old man, Ramu would not be afraid to shock and electrocute enemies who defied his might. And as the franchise has continued to grow, Ramu has been ever present whenever judgment needed to be doled out. But Ramu has not always been the de facto lightning elemental summon, and the occasional time away from the spotlight has led to the introduction of some intriguing evolutions. Many of these have related to visual changes, with designers keen to get as creative as they could without making fundamental changes to the wider visual themes associated with the summon. But there have been subtle evolutions with regards to abilities and also numerous other illusions, especially when it comes to Ramu's involvement with the narrative. Throughout this video, we hope to investigate these areas in significant detail as we study how every single appearance of Ramu is tied together. So strap yourselves in as we explore the complete evolution of Ramu in our typical granular style starting with its mythological roots and following it through from its initial appearance in Final Fantasy 3 all the way through to the modern day with Final Fantasy 16. To understand the true extent of Ramu's evolution throughout the Final Fantasy franchise, first we must understand its mythological roots. But unlike some of the other summons we've covered in the past, this one isn't quite as clear cut, at least not at first glance anyway. The main reason for this is that there is no explicit mythological being known as Ramu that can be seen to have served as a direct reference, nor is there anything of a similar name in other related works such as Dungeons and Dragons, Wizardry or Ultima, works that are known to have inspired Final Fantasy. But as Ramu evolved through the medium of Final Fantasy, that doesn't mean there wouldn't be other mythological illusions that could be seen, they would just appear in subtle or sometimes unsubtle ways. The first appearance of Ramu would come in Final Fantasy III, as it could be obtained by purchasing the Spark spell from a vendor in the town of Repleto. Via this spell, evokers, sages and summoners could call upon the power of Ramu, and in the initial Famicom version there were numerous applications. When used by an evoker, Ramu would perform a white or black magic equivalent ability. The white effect was called Mind Blast, which could paralyze all enemies and the black effect was called something akin to the Divine Thunderbolt, which would deal lightning elemental damage to a single target. When used by a summoner or sage, Ramu would then use its summon spell, which in its initial iteration was roughly translated to Heavenly Wrath. This would deal mid-level lightning damage to all enemies. When each ability was used, players would call forth a powerful being that was quite unlike any of the other summoned beasts, Whereas many of them had either clear bestial or physical qualities, Ramu was depicted by Yoshitaka Amano as an old man with a long, grey and white beard with accompanying flailed moustache. His apparel was also very modest, a long grey robe with blue accents, and his weapon of choice was a purple staff that was the size of his body that had a rounded tip. This concept was recreated in-game via three separate colour palettes. Each contained some aspect of the concept, but none were an exact colour match. One variant, for example, saw Ramu given bright blue hair and a purple robe, while another had a grey robe with orange accents. But even though some of these colour palettes seemed quite extreme, as the franchise built out, some of them would be seen again. Summons would return in Final Fantasy IV, but almost every aspect of them was changed. Instead of being purchasable from a store and being summonable by anyone adopting one of the three appropriate job classes, summons could now only be used by one character, Rydia, and the methods of acquisition varied. In the case of Ramu, the method of acquisition was quite simple as it was innate. Rydia had access to the summon as soon as she joined the party as an adult. When called upon, Ramu now only had access to one move, called Judgment Bolt, 
This served as a direct replica for Heavenly Wrath, able to deal moderate lightning elemental damage to all enemies. But because of the design of Final Fantasy IV, alongside Ramu being a low tier summon for large portions of the game, he was also obsolete. Very few enemies were weak to lightning, and due to the casting time of Ramu, summoning the powerful ally was not all that favourable in comparison to say, using Bolt 2. And such was the poor balancing in this regard, that the charge time of Ramu was even reduced with subsequent updates, including the Easy Type release. From a visual perspective, Ramu was very similar to the Amano concept art from Final Fantasy III. He appeared with a long, white beard with a pronounced moustache, and his long cloak was grey with blue accents. The only major exception was the staff, as although it still had a rounded tip, the length was a lot shorter, and it was coloured like the very lightning it was summoning. For the western release, there was also one extra element worth noting, and this then relates back to the mythological roots, or rather, the supposed lack of them. When Final Fantasy IV released in North America, Ramu was renamed to Indra. This was a rather interesting choice, because when appearing in sacred texts relating to Hinduism, Indra was noted as being associated with lightning, thunder, and storms. In Final Fantasy V, Ramu continued the visual trend. But certain elements were enhanced. The staff, for example, was now much larger than Ramu itself, and also had lightning wrapped around its body. Ramu was also given a small role to play in the story, and this introduced another method of acquisition. Found near the forest of Istory, Ramu would need to be encountered and then defeated in an optional encounter in order for him to lend his strength to the party. But if the party had already acquired Ifrit prior to this encounter happening and took no action, Ifrit would make his presence known. This would then lead to Ramu joining the party without any further test of strength being required as he trusted that anyone who could convince Ifrit to join the party was worthy of his might as well. Should the party choose to engage with Ramu, they would face a tough encounter. Perhaps as a throwback to Final Fantasy III, this would see Ramu able to use some enfeebling magic in the form of Flash and Mini, as well as Electrocute, which dealt high lightning elemental damage, but only to one target. Once defeated, Ramu would be made available to the player as a level 2 summon, and when called upon, Judgment Bolt remained as the signature attack, able to deal lightning elemental damage to all enemies. Final Fantasy VI saw the roster of summons available to the player explode as they were made fundamental to the narrative, and as one of the originators, Ramu was given a prominent role. Ramu would be the first Magicite acquired by the party, having been encountered in Zozo. Prior to turning into a Magicite, he suggested the party venture to the Magitech research facility as there were espers being held there for research purposes. Upon arriving, it was revealed that cruel experiments had been conducted, and many of the espers were left drained and desperate. Ifrit and Shiva were so downtrodden that when they encountered the party, their instinct was to fight. It would only be after sensing Ramu partway through the encounter that the pair stood down, a nice narrative nod back to the previous game. Further to this, Ramu also took on the role of mentor and guardian. Having escaped from the research centre many years prior, Ramu was able to live amongst humans due to his appearance being similar enough. And after Terra lost control of the powers that were housed deep within her, Ramu was there to calm her down, take care of her, and serve as a mentor, if only for a short time. This double life also meant Ramu was given two visual identities, one for everyday life and an aggrandized version for when he would be called upon in combat where he would use Judgment Bolt to do lightning damage to all enemies. Many of the visual notes were similar to the past, but Ramu's robe now had more of a green tint, and his staff was purple with red accents. As Final Fantasy transitioned over to a new console generation, the role of summons changed. This saw their narrative involvement removed, but much more effort was placed around elevating their damage dealing potential and the visual spectacle associated with their summon spells. Ramu could be found inside the gold saucer, picked up from the floor, and this granted the player access to a powerful lightning elemental spell that could deal damage to all enemies. But just as in Final Fantasy IV, Ramu would be outclassed. Kujata and Typhon could also deal lightning damage, albeit in conjunction with some other elements, but Bolt 3 had more damage dealing potential as a lightning exclusive spell, 
From a visual perspective, Ramu's design was very close to the original Amano artwork from Final Fantasy III, perhaps more so than any previous design, and this even included the long, blue fingernails. The only slight change was that Ramu's hair was now more blonde than white or grey. A similar aesthetic was then carried forward for Before Crisis, but the colours were doled out, perhaps due to the limitations of the device. The next appearance of Ramu came via Final Fantasy Tactics, which served as the first major spin-off for the franchise. Ramu appeared alongside many other venerable summons, but there was another change in terms of acquisition. Unlike previous games, where Ramu was either innate, would need to be fought or could simply be purchased, in Final Fantasy Tactics, Ramu had to be learnt by levelling up and spending the subsequent job points. Ramu was one of the first that could be learnt alongside Ifrit and Shiva, something that denoted its power as Joint Weakest. But it could still be useful when fighting against enemies that were weak to lightning. When called upon, Ramu would use Judgment Bolt. But whereas in previous games this move would damage all enemies, it would now target a specific area of the map. There were also some subtle design changes. Ramu now had very clear blonde hair, and for the first time, his long staff had a blunt tip instead of a rounded one. Not long after the release of Final Fantasy Tactics, Ramu would appear in another spin-off called Chocobo's Dungeon. The application of Ramu would be quite standard, as he appeared to deal lightning-based damage to all those who opposed the Chocobo, but there were some design tweaks. The blonde hair was retained, and Ramu wore a long white robe that now featured purple accents. But perhaps the biggest change came with Ramu's staff, as it was now wooden, and although the end of the staff was still round, it was bulbous and raw. The same iteration of Ramu would then appear within its sequel, Chocobo's Dungeon 2. Now as the franchise continued to evolve and new summons were introduced, Ramu was absent in Final Fantasy VIII in favour of introducing another lightning elemental summon called Quetzalcoatl. But as Final Fantasy IX was designed to serve as a tribute to what had come before, Ramu returned with a vengeance. Similar to Final Fantasy VI, this saw Ramu given a dual role within the game, as he appeared as both an NPC and a summon. And the role he played within the narrative was also similar, as just as he had helped Terra come to terms with her powers after a shocking reveal, he did the same for Garnet. After helping Garnet come to terms with her past and completing some trials, she would gain access to Ramu via the Peridot gemstone. When called upon, true to form, Ramu would shock with a lightning-based attack called Judgment Bolt that would deal damage to all enemies. But there were now two variations of the move, with different legs of animations determining the damage. Ramu's damage could also be influenced by how many Peridots were in the party's inventory. The other interesting note about this particular iteration of Ramu was that across the NPC and summon models, there were some interesting design choices. For example, green was now the focal point of the colour palette, and this had not been seen in such an obvious form since Final Fantasy III. Ramu's staff, in summon form, also had a sculpted tip, as opposed to the typical rounded or blunt versions. The next chronological appearance of Ramu came in Final Fantasy XI. Whereas all previous games had been offline, Final Fantasy XI took things online, and into a whole different genre. Based on this, numerous lore and gameplay aspects were fleshed out, and in this regard, summons saw massive benefit. They became integrated into the story, and Ramu was created as one of the sleeping gods alongside Ifrit and Shiva and they resided in proto-crystals that were scattered all throughout Vanadiel. It was through these proto-crystals that the power of the elemental gods could be harnessed, but not without fighting them first. In the case of Ramu, Ramu Prime would need to be defeated as part of the Trial by Lightning questline, and upon doing so, summoners would gain access to a powerful tool. When summoned, Ramu would appear alongside the summoner, and because of the enhanced combat application, Ramu was given an expanded list of abilities. This included Judgment Bolt, which was accessible as part of the summoner's astral flow, but it extended beyond this. Thunder Spark, for example, dealt lightning damage to target foes, but also had the chance to paralyze enemies caught within its area of effect. And this was an interesting ode back to Final Fantasy III, where a similar function was delivered via Mind Blast. On top of this, 
Ramu also had access to numerous abilities that could inflict the most instant form of paralyze, called stun. This could be delivered via shock strike, chaotic strike, and vault strike. As a further allusion to Final Fantasy III, Ramu had access to an ability called Thunderstorm. This dealt lightning damage to just a single target, and the damage dealt would vary depending on a crew TP. Perhaps as a way of pushing Ramu beyond these illusions, the designers created a visual spectacle that was quite unlike anything seen before. Whereas Ramu had almost always been depicted in white or grey clothing, in Final Fantasy XI the colour scheme was almost all black, with only a few purple accents. This represented a huge tonal shift, and the look was complete by Ramu having an all black staff with a sculpted tip. The visual sweeping changes then continued in Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. For this iteration, Ramu retained a long white beard and still had a cloak with purple accents, but for the first time in the franchise, Ramu now had a full set of armour. Unlike every prior game, in Tactics Advance, Ramu could also be summoned by equipping an item, with the specific item required being the Judge Staff, a rather apt name. Once enough AP had been accumulated, Ramu could then be mastered, allowing for the player to call upon the summon without equipping the staff, even when using another job. And when called upon, Ramu would perform a lightning based move that would deal damage to all enemies in a particular area, but it had no specific name due to a design decision taken by the developers. This particular iteration of Ramu was then carried forward to many of the other properties that spawned from Tactics Advance, including Tactics A2 and Tactics S. Ramu did not feature in Final Fantasy XII, but there was a place within its follow-up, Revenant Wings, and here we got to see further visual changes. Ramu was now given a rather regal look, which featured white, purple and green, all colours associated with Ramu since its very first appearance. He also carried a wooden staff with a rounded tip, but there was a curious amendment made to his beard, as although it was still grey, it was now in a plait. In terms of gameplay application, Ramu could be bought by the Aurasite system, and it was classified as a rank 3 thunder type flying summon. This made Ramu high tier, and it could deal high damage through the use of Thunderstorm, which would only attack a single target, and its special ability, Judgment Bolt. There was also a new trait introduced, as Judgment Bolt was now an area effect move that could inflict silence as opposed to paralyze. Revenant Wings also saw the introduction of Ramu offshoots in the form of Raiden, who served as his pupil, and Rami, a small automaton. The focus on visual changes continued when Ramu returned in the Final Fantasy IV remake. Ramu no longer had a long visible beard, although his moustache was retained, but perhaps the most noticeable change came from the colour palette, as it was now a kind of beige colour that was unlike anything seen before. Everything else, however, was a direct reference to the original. Ramu was auto learnt and mandatory, and when called upon, would perform Judgment Bolt. Ramu next surfaced in Dissidia Final Fantasy, a game that served as a massive tribute to the entire franchise. It saw the past of Ramu celebrated, with Final Fantasy V Ramu called upon when doing a manual summon, and Final Fantasy XI Ramu called when doing an automatic summon and the same function was then retained for Ramu's appearance in Dissidia Duodecim. In Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo's Tales, Ramu would appear as a boss, and it was unlike anything seen before. During the encounter, we got to see a very unique visual interpretation of Ramu. Instead of having a humanoid form, Ramu appeared in the shape of a glass vessel, but despite this huge change, the beard and moustache were still retained. The other unique element was the use of an ability called Thunderball. This saw Ramu summon electrified orbs onto the map and they would move towards the chocobo and damage it should they make contact. Final Fantasy XIII would only feature a loose reference to Ramu. It would see the now venerable summon appear during the Pompa Sancta event, where it served as an eidolon for a pulseless sea that was attempting to destroy Cocoon. As part of this mini narrative, Ramu squared off against Ifrit, a nice allusion to previous games where the pair had a connection. The visual depiction of Ramu then served as something of a throwback to Tactics Advance, as it was wearing armour. Ramu's next appearance served as a nice ode to the early iterations of the franchise, but there were also some crucial differences. 
For example, this time Ramu's long cape was a vibrant blue, and he was also given some kind of golden crown, which complemented his golden blonde hair. To be acquired, Ramu would need to be fought and defeated in the Cave of Formination. During this fight, and when used as a summon after, Ramu would then make use of Judgment Bolt, which displayed the standard application. The next major iteration of Ramu though, came in Final Fantasy XIV, and as seen in Final Fantasy XI, Ramu was ingrained into the game's lore. This time, Ramu was the primal worshipped by the Sylph Beast Tribe. They had no intention of summoning their primal, and their resolve remained steadfast for some time, but after receiving constant provocation they relented, and Ramu was brought forth. When this happened, players bore witness to Ramu there was a clear evolution of Final Fantasy XI, as black and purple were the predominant colours used. However, whereas the previous iteration reduced focus on Ramu's facial hair, in Final Fantasy XIV it was embellished upon to become the most flamboyant version seen up until this point in the franchise. As part of a realm reborn, Ramu could be fought against numerous times in the Striking Tree, and as part of these encounters there were numerous allusions back to the past, some of which were quite unexpected. Shock Strike and Chaotic Strike would return from Final Fantasy XI, and just like in the original incarnation, Chaotic Strike would stun a random player. The other notable event was that Ramu would be able to summon numerous objects. The first type would come via Thunderstorm. When the ability landed, it would generate orbs, and similar to in Final Fantasy Fables, these orbs could be interacted with. However, instead of dealing damage, this time they would need to be interacted with to reduce Ramu's damage output. Ramu would also be able to summon Grey Arbiters. Unlike the orbs, these would cast straight line spells and would need to be defeated before Ramu used his ultimate ability, Judgment Bolt. As the Shadowbringers expansion progressed, players would then bear witness to a wholly unique appearance of Ramu. As part of patch 5.2, players could take part in a raid called Eden's vs Formination, also known as E5N, which was perhaps a nod back to Final Fantasy Dimensions. This raid would introduce an alternate version of Ramu owing to his merging with another very popular lightning themed summon, Ixion. With both summons combined, Ramu now had a lower half of his body that was based on equine anatomy, but to take things further, he also had wings. Known as the Heritor of Levin, this Ramu would use some of the same abilities as the regular Ramu, such as Thunderstorm. But the majority of the moves were unique to this encounter, and there was even a return to the Vault naming convention only seen before in Final Fantasy XI. In Final Fantasy Explorers, Ramu was one of the 12 summons available for players to call upon, but he would first need to be defeated in combat. During the encounter, and when summoned, Ramu would use Judgment Bolt, but there were also numerous throwbacks to the past, including abilities that would inflict the paralysis status effect, and some evolutions. For example, Ramu could now summon crystals around the arena that would give him temporary invincibility, and he could also teleport. The visual style was also quite unique, as Ramu now had a feline face complete with a full mane. And this iteration of Ramu was then reused in Final Fantasy Explorer's Force. Whereas Final Fantasy Dimensions was very careful to pay tribute to the past, its sequel was all about expression and expansion, and this meant we got to see some wonderful interpretations of Ramu. Many of the basic forms of Ramu feature traditional visual styles, with long robes, long facial hair, and a long staff with rounded tip, but there was one iteration associated with Amo that was quite different. This version of Ramu seemed to be integrated with the very fabric of space, as it had no specific humanoid body. All that could be seen, outside of Ramu's face, was a figure that featured the cosmos. We also got to see the first appearance of Dark Ramu, which was associated with Mena. The other quite erroneous trait adopted by Ramu in Dimensions 2 was that despite teaching the Thunder ability and using Judgment Bolt, and the enhanced version dubbed Judgment Strike, these abilities were now associated with the Wind element as opposed to Lightning or Thunder. Mobius would also feature two iterations of Ramu, but this was quite few in comparison to many of the other venerable summons. The first Ramu was introduced on the 7th of December 2016, and it was again associated with the wind element despite the card visualization itself showing lightning bolts everywhere. And this time, even Ramu's main ability was changed to follow suit, 
as it was called Fatal Eroga. The other interesting element was that Ramu wielded a trident and had four mustache strands as opposed to the codified two. Half a year later, a Final Fantasy VII themed version of Ramu was added into the game. This adopted a more traditional visual style compared to the original Mobius version of Ramu, but there was still no association with Thunder. This iteration was instead aligned with the light element, and its ultimate move was Light Burst. For Brave Exvius, the traits associated with Ramu returned to something a bit more traditional. Ramu could now be found inside the optional Thunder Summit dungeon, and could be acquired after being bested in combat. But when wielded as a summon, its design was pretty incredible. Serving as an amplified version of the earlier iterations of Ramu, all of the classic visual traits were there, and the staff even had lightning wrapped around its body, just like in Final Fantasy V. When called upon, Ramu would use the Judgment Bolt evocation, and its power could be upgraded twice by defeating Ramu in two further optional encounters. It could also teach numerous thunder spells and thunderous skies. But perhaps the most interesting ability Ramu could teach was Osmos, as it was able to wield this ability in numerous boss encounters throughout the years. Ramu next appeared in Dissidia Final Fantasy Arcade and NT as one of the summons that players could use to try and gain the advantage. Unlike the two previous Dissidia games, where past iterations were referenced, Dissidia Arcade featured an original take on the venerable summon. It saw Ramu wearing a long robe with plenty of embellishments, and his moustache was now longer than his beard. Ramu would also have blue fingernails, a seldom used trait that was introduced with the original Amano concept art. When called upon, Ramu would be able to deal damage to the opposition team by using Thunderstorm, with Judgment Bolt reserved as the ultimate move. But when fought against, Ramu would use a ton of original abilities, such as Interdimensional Glimmer and Volcanic Eruption. This version of Ramu would then appear in Opera Omnia, and it would see the return of a Paralysis Link, as Judgment Bolt could inflict this status effect, sometimes even against bosses. Acting as a tribute game, World of Final Fantasy featured Ramu in a prominent story role alongside Ifrit and Shiva, and after jumping through enough hoops, Ramu could also be obtained as a Mirage. But what was seen would end up being quite unlike any previous iteration of Ramu, at least from a visual perspective. Ramu featured long blonde hair and a moustache that was shaped like a lightning bolt. He was also wearing a glorious set of armour, and had a bright blue staff that looked more like a spear. But beyond that, Ramu also now had what appeared to be green and black horns. When fought, or used as a mirage, Ramu would use numerous lightning based abilities, with Judgment Bolt appearing as the most powerful. But some interesting nods to the past would appear through the various mirages connected with Ramu. Ramul, for example, who was said to be Ramu's granddaughter, would use Heavenly Wrath. This ability had not been seen by name since Final Fantasy III. There would also be a return for Dark Ramu, who this time was known as Rai Ramu. Final Fantasy XV saw Ramu selected as one of the Astrals, but the role of Ramu was quite limited in comparison to his contemporaries. According to the law, Ramu would pass judgment on criminals who were sentenced to spend their time at Angel Guard. And after the War of the Astrals, he decided to rest until he was awoken by Luna Freya. This part of the narrative then served as a strong reference back to Final Fantasy IX, as to receive the power of Ramu, Noctis would need to pass a trial. After forging a pact with the Astral, Noctis would be able to call forth Ramu, and he would be far more likely to appear than any of the other Astrals due to there being no specific requirements outside of random number generation. When called upon, he would use Judgment Bolt to deal devastating damage to the nearby area, and during the summon sequence, players would bear witness to a very faithful and imposing design. There was also one pertinent illusion here, as the top of Ramu's staff featured the head of Ixion. Much like in some of the other mobile games, Ramu was introduced in War of the Visions very close to launch, and the lightning based elemental alignment returned, as well as Judgment Bolt as the evocation magic. There were some significant design changes though between Brave Exvius and War of the Visions. For example, Ramu had a very dark colour palette that featured green and purple accents, but perhaps the biggest change was that Ramu's staff contained a large crystal. Ramu then featured in the Final Fantasy VII Remake, but not in the main game, 
It was instead saved up for its downloadable expansion called Intermission. Similar to many of the summons in the core experience, Rammel would need to be beaten in one of Chadley's VR simulator missions before being made available to the player. During the encounter, Rammel would make use of an extensive set of abilities, some of which were similar to abilities from the past. Levin Arrows, Voltaic Lance and Summon Sparks, for example, would all create something that could be interacted with in the map, either by walking into it or by attacking. Ramu would also be able to use Luminous Falcon to teleport, just like in Final Fantasy Explorers. Now, due to its source, this version of Ramu did have some similarities with the original design from Final Fantasy VII, but there were some key differences. Ramu's cloak, for example, was now much more vibrant and ornate, and his staff had a spear tip as well as a skull. That then brings us on to Final Fantasy XVI which featured the most recent and most comprehensive version of Ramu to date. And it's at this point that we do need to do a small spoiler warning for those of you who have not yet finished Final Fantasy XVI. Now, Ramu had sometimes been granted narrative involvement, but it was often minimal. In both Final Fantasy VI and IX, this saw Ramu appear as an NPC who helped to guide one of the main protagonists through the discovery of a new power. And once they were comfortable, or had passed so-called trials, he would bequeath that power to said protagonist. Final Fantasy XVI followed that exact same narrative structure to a T. It just featured a lot more depth. And this depth was provided by Ramu being connected with one of the game's main protagonists, Sid Tillamon. Sid would serve as the dominant of Ramu, something that saw him undertake a dual role. And by the time he encountered Clive, he was something of an elderly statesman. At this time, Sid was unaware of the power housed within Clive, but he was desperate to save Jill Warwick from her servitude as she was the dominant of Shiva. It would later be revealed that Clive was the dominant of Ifrit, and Sid would be there to guide Clive as something of a mentor. That was, until Sid gave his life in the fight against Ultima and willingly gave his powers to Clive so that he could continue the fight. In this regard, even though there were parallels to Final Fantasy IX, the parallel with Final Fantasy VI was much closer, as in that particular game, Ramu even helped to calm Terra after she had lost control of her powers, much as Sid did when Clive awakened and lost control after the battle with Garuda. Beyond that, Final Fantasy XVI would also revive the narrative connection that existed between Ramu and both Ifrit and Shiva, something that was also very strong in Final Fantasy VI. The visual thematics also ran deep, as so many of the team who worked on XVI also worked on XI and XIV. This saw Ramu adopt a very dark colour palette that focused around black and purple. Hiroshi Minagawa was also the artistic supervisor on Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, where Ramu wore armour for the first time. And in 16, Ramu also wore armour, and had perhaps one of the most intricate and developed staffs we'd ever seen. The abilities of Ramu also referenced numerous aspects. Lightning Rod, for example, allowed Clive to summon an electrical sphere that would deal damage to nearby targets when struck, while Thunderstorm would deal area of effect damage. Judgment Bolt then appeared as the most powerful ability, but there was a crucial deviation here. Throughout most of the franchise, Judgment Bolt had almost been exclusive in its application. It would deal lightning elemental damage to all targets, or at least targets in a large range. But in Final Fantasy XVI, even though there would be some residual splash damage, Judgment Bolt had a primary focus on damaging just one single target. That such a well-formed version of Ramu was seen within the most iteration was a testament to the time and effort that was placed around developing Final Fantasy XVI in general. It pulled from numerous sources to create an iteration of the venerable summon that was perhaps more original and formative than any other. And that's quite an interesting point, because unlike many of the other summons we've covered throughout this series, Ramu has remained quite consistent. After being introduced in Final Fantasy III, the core spine of Ramu has almost never changed or deviated in any kind of meaningful way. It has also been considered one of the originators, but the impact, power and gravitas exhibited by Ramu has never quite matched up to the likes of Bahamut, Shiva or Ifrit. And that's perhaps why Ramu's core design has almost never changed. Whereas other summons have played around with different genders, animalistic influences and even mechanical hybrids, Ramu has almost always been an old man with a long beard holding a staff, 
there are only a handful of exceptions, such as the Ramu that appeared in Final Fantasy Explorers or in Final Fantasy Fables. But for the most part, artists had merely created slight adaptations of the original source by adjusting colour schemes or changing the tip of Ramu's staff. Final Fantasy XVI was the same in some regards, but where it differed was through its evolution of narrative concepts. And as the franchise builds out, we can only hope that this will place Ramu in a more favourable light. But as we've now reached the conclusion of this study, we'd ask you to consider liking this video if you enjoyed the content. And as always, be sure to make your thoughts known in the comments below. Feel free to also give suggestions about what you'd like us to cover next within our evolutionary studies. Alright everyone, with that, this is Daryl signing out. As always, I'd like to give a big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube members and supporters, especially Benjamin Snow, The Livestream, Gregory, Justin Dent and Sukun TDK, who are super special Onion Knight supporters. And of course, a big thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.